while you working and you seeing friends come and go in the industry, folks that came in with the same dreams that you had, but winded up dying hard trying to pursue those dreams. How did that impact your career and your mind state moving forward and just maintaining in the game? You know, um, one thing I think people know about me is that I've always been health conscious. My little, I work out, like, yeah. you know, so the inside to me is just as important as the outside. Um, what's been devastating, and it's been, I've had this conversation with another friend of mine about what is happening with our men, mm -hmm. not just in hip hop, but all of these from DMX to Biz Markey to Michael yeah. K. Williams, like it's always been an Andre Harrell, all of our men are not taking care of ourselves. It's been Thank God, quite a while since a female that we recognize and love has passed, mm -hmm. but it's 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 tragic. Um, and right now I've been, you know, part of me working on the dance documentary I'm doing is because one time is of the essence and two, I can't talk to Heavy D. I can't talk to Michael Jackson. I can't talk to Andre Harrell. I can't talk to John Singleton. Like there's, you know, a lot of list of people I can't talk to whose stories I share, Whitney, everybody, you know what I mean? So it's like, hopefully people are recognizing, you know, the value in seeing what's happening with DMX and all these people that you have to either walk away, Chris Lighty included, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's not just the people in front of the cameras, the people behind the scenes too, the pressures and the stress. And sometimes you got to walk away from this business. Hopefully people are more comfortable now about dealing with mental health. But I think because of me, I have a family that's always been, is very affectionate and is very talkative and open. So that was my saving grace, plus being on a gymnastic team with a coach that was very responsible with our girl team, you know what I mean? So, um, and I surround myself around positive people. I don't have time to be bothered with people who I got to be looking over my shoulders and ducking bullets. Like, I'm, that's not my style at all. That's not my style at all. Whitney Houston, I'm every woman. Working with her on that, what was that experience like? Oh, Whitney, Whitney was another around the way girl. Because you remember, I danced for Bobby Brown. So Whitney was always on the road with us. And Whitney loved hanging out with the dancers. And it really, we all just felt like a girl crew. You know, um, you guys, and when I say you guys, the fans or the public only saw the pristine, whatever Clive Davis had her doing. But Whitney literally was your girl that you went to high school with, that you sit at the lunch table with, popping gum, doing double dutch, yeah. talk, playing handball, talking smack, can braid my hair. You know, she was that chicken. So that's the side of Whitney I got to know. And us doing that I'm Every Woman video, one, because the legendary Shaka Khan was in the building. Two, the mm -hmm. song was already a classic. Three, uh, the director, I think that was Randy St. Nicholas, used this beautiful sepia tone and stuff. And, uh, you know, having to choreograph and be like, okay, all of us are in this moment with those beautiful little girls, like, and she was still pregnant. And it was just, it was, she was radiant and it was fun. And it was, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful moment for us. When does Big Les feel like she's in her element? Is it on the television, interviewing folks? Is it on the radio or is it dancing or was it on tour? Oh, she's all of it, all <laughs> of it. Like all, like those are all, Everything about who I am are all of those things. If you see me at a club, I'm usually dancing by myself by the speaker for about five hours straight. Seriously, especially if the DJ is hot. Very rare that I'm usually dancing with a guy or anything because, or I'm in a crew of guys battling, like, because that's my comfort zone. Hot, yes. sweaty. I don't care if I got a dress on. Like, it doesn't even matter. Um, I'm definitely comfortable in front of the camera. And I love, like, when I walk into, a theater space or a studio, like something just kind of comes over me where it just feels mm -hmm. like home. And it's hard for me even to like watch a concert. Like I went to see Usher's show in Vegas and all every part of me wants to jump on stage, just get it <laughs> and dance. Like it's hard to sit in the audience but those all speak to the essence of my personality. And I just love communicating and performing um, radio is the same way. You know, I'm chatty Kathy because I'm talking your head off. So I like to talk, but I like to talk about meaningful stuff. Um, and I love being around really, really, really smart people. So I love learning and, you know, um, absorbing knowledge and getting new information and sharing new information and all of that stuff. So I'm, I'm a nerd behind closed doors as much as everybody thinks I'm this cool chick from Queens. Like I appreciate that, but I really am. Like I watch documentaries all the time. I watch foreign films all the time. I read books all the time. So, you know. 
living single when you had to hit him with that choreography for that. What was that like when you crunked that thing all the way up? And then every time the show came on, it was all about Big Leg. Oh my God. First of all, I got to work with the legendary Otis Sali directographer. For those who don't know, mm -hmm. he has worked with Spike Lee for a thousand years. So he had done mm -hmm. school days, good and black hair. I don't want to be alone tonight. Mm -hmm. I actually met him. He was doing um, Malcolm X and I was on tour while they were having auditions for, if you ever see the Lindy Hop scene, which is like my favorite era of dance. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I'm missing this. I'm missing this. And so when I got off tour, one of my friends was in rehearsal with him. I came by the rehearsal to meet him, see if I could slide in, but it was too late. But he actually knew who I was, which was like crazy. And then to get a phone call from him, like weeks or months later, you're on the phone like, this is who? And he's like, listen, I have this idea. I don't have the job yet, but this is an idea. I feel like we can do it. There's a new show coming. I think you'd be perfect for my vision, blah, blah, blah. So we go, we're under the Brooklyn Bridge and literally dancing and back flipping for 10 hours on cobblestone all day. Okay. Um, and so when I see his final edit, I don't see any, like there's maybe one version that has like a front flip in it, but none of the real gymnastic stuff. And I was kind of devastated. But Otis being the genius that he is, was like, it doesn't need any of that stuff. He just took really good nuances. And once he presented it to Fox, they were like, we love it, we'll take it. I just didn't, the way you asked me about who I thought would blow up and we'd still see from you, I didn't think that this was something that was gonna blow up and still have the lifespan that it's had. It's crazy yeah. to me that this thing has just had a life of its own. And I tried to audition to you know, get on the show and be a cast member, but they wouldn't see me, so, you know. My Hopefully, God. if they do a reboot, I can come in and be the neighbor upstairs or something. But, exactly. You know. When you look back over your career, though, Liz, I mean, too many iconic moments to just put into one box or to count on both hands. What goes through your mind when you go to your memories museum and you think to yourself, yeah, I was over there with Michael Jackson. Yeah, I was over there doing Rap City, breaking every last artist that was part of the golden era. I was dancing on tour with Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston, and I've been all over the place achieving and winning at the highest level that you could possibly do that. I don't revel so much in the past, and I honestly don't remember a lot of it until I talk to people like you who remind me of all the things I've done. Because what people don't understand is when you're in one job, you're looking 10 steps ahead for the next job, right? Because you're a freelance dancer who's not on contract with a studio, you don't really have an agent or anything. So you're grateful for the job and then you're hustling for the next one. So you almost don't even get to enjoy it until after. And so, but the goal for me is because my list of, my bucket list of things to do is so long, mm -hmm. I'm trying to check them all off. So I'm not living in the moment. I'm still trying to hustle mm -hmm. to get my documentary done, to you know still be an action film star while I can still do backflips. So that's kind of where my head is. It And I get things now that on social media I get videos sent to me that I even forgot that I did or clips and I was like where did this who found this you know and I'm like oh yeah I did do that but it does take me to a place in time of just joy and happiness and being one of the luckiest human beings on the planet for all the blessings that I've had because again I'm still shocked that me being a tomboy climbing trees and doing like cartwheels in my house got me to where I am today traveling the globe, a full scholarship to college, being able to call certain people my friends. Um, I think what happens though is that people forget that these stars are human beings, right? Mm -hmm. That the job is one thing, but them being a person is another, right? So sure, it's great that they have a $30 million house and I can go swim in their pool, mm -hmm. but they're also, some people aren't nice, aren't nice and some people are. And so mm -hmm. those are the people I like to call like my friends or really good associates or whatever.